season. So once again, I'm going to be bundling together a bunch of reviews into one video. I'm going to be starting with Rise of the Planet of the Apes on Blu-ray. If you did not see this movie this year, shame on you because this movie is awesome. Rise of the Planet of the Apes shows you how the Planet of the Apes came to be. It introduces Caesar, the first smart ape chimpanzee, who is motion captured by Andy Serkis and in an amazing way. There's also main character, a scientist, played by James Franco, who discovers Caesar and teaches Caesar and raises Caesar. And um, Franco is trying to develop a cure for Alzheimer's because his father has Alzheimer's. His father's played by John Lithgow. And also um, James Franco's girlfriend is played by Frida Pinto. This movie is amazing. There are also great performances by Tom Felton and Brian Cox. And not to mention all the unnamed motion capture actors who also played apes in this film. What I love about this on Blu-ray is you get to see so much of the motion capture. The deleted scenes, most of them you just see Andy Serkis with all the little dots on his body in the funky little suit running around like an ape. And he looks amazing. You can see why this movie is so good based on his performance. You can see the real performance. Wow! There are 11 deleted scenes. There's a feature on the genius of Andy Serkis, which definitely a genius. He led teaching the rest of the actors how to do this, and there's a scene breakdown, a new generation of apes talking about the apes they chose, why they chose them, breaking motion picture boundaries. Oh my gosh, all this stuff is really fascinating. And I also love The Great Apes, which is another feature just on learning about apes. You can learn about chimpanzees, you can learn about orangutans and gorillas. You also get mythology of the apes, talking about the Planet of the Apes series, composing the score with Patrick Doyle. This is another movie with a good score. I didn't even realize how good when, until I listened to it a second time. And then audio commentaries by director and writers. I listened to that entire commentary. It is fascinating stuff. I love hearing about where ideas came from, why they did things the way they did, which scenes Andy couldn't do because the ape was too small when they had to scale it down. And there's a character concept art gallery. Ah, whatever, art galleries, who cares? But this movie is awesome and you need it. If you don't have it, you should get it. Next is Family Guy, Volume 9. Awesome. Still don't understand how these are divided into volumes and not seasons. Cool episodes that this has is the murder mystery extended episode, which was very cool. I love the risks that they took with it, the format, and all the visual stuff they threw in for extras. And they weren't afraid to kill off characters, and they were characters you knew. Okay, there's like one character that they introduced just to kill, but the rest of them you knew. There's also an episode in here where Brian and Stewie get locked in a bank vault, and the entire episode is the two of them without really cutting away very much. And it's an interesting concept, it's a daring concept, but at the same time, how many damn episodes can we have of just Brian and Stewie? I'm getting a little tired of them sometimes. But that episode pushes the boundaries with what my stomach can tolerate. Other great episodes is, you know, Quagmire's dad getting a sex change, problems with the pewter smidge, and the Rush Limbaugh episode where we expose just how lame Brian is. It's, as the show goes on, Brian becomes my least favorite character because he just wants to argue with everybody over everything and he isn't that firmly rooted in his beliefs. And how can he criticize anyone else when he's never accomplished anything and he's a dog? But, you know, I digress. Family Guy is great. The features are great. You get commentary on some of the episodes, deleted scenes, very funny. And also Brian and Stewie, The Lost Phone Call, which is an excerpt from that Brian and Stewie episode. There's the making of that episode, and then there were fewer, which is the murder mystery. And I really enjoyed that. Lois, uh, the, the actress who does Lois, also does the voice of Stephanie. And I really like the history of the world, according to Family Guy. It's nearly the length of a full-length episode, and it takes all the clips of Family Guy doing historical cutaways and kind of puts them all together. Family Guy at Comic-Con 2010 is really great because you get everybody on the panel, and uh, Seth MacFarlane does a live vocalization of the song about the Down Syndrome girl. Also side-by-side -side animatics and uh, an episode of The Cleveland Show. 
That's Family Guy Volume 9 on DVD. 14 episodes on three discs. Next is Dolphin Tale, a Blu-ray plus DVD plus ultraviolet digital copy. Stars Harry Connick Jr., Ashley Judd, Chris Christopherson, Morgan Freeman, and oh look, they left off the little boy who is the main character. The two kids once again are played by Nathan Gamble and Cozy Zulzendorf, and they are the stars of the show because their cute factor is a factor of 10 and they are awesome and Oh yeah, the kid's like actually on the cover, but he's under these stickers. I was worried that this movie was going to be really lame, but I really enjoyed it because it's the story of Winter, the dolphin whose tail had to be cut off after it was horribly infected after an accident with a rope, and uh, this it's played by the real Winter. I thought it was a great summer movie, and it's definitely great for kids, and it will show you that you can do anything because this dolphin learned to swim after not having a tail. There are some cool features on this. The story of the Hitosh Rainbow Bridge that Harry Connick Jr. tells in the movie is animated and shown to you and it's actually really cute. At Home with Winter, you get a behind the scenes look at Winter's real home. And Dolphin Tail Spotlight on a Scene, it shows more about the 3D effects and stuff. And also Winter's Inspiration, it tells more about the story of Winter's rescue and her prosthetics and shows you some of the people. There's something about an animated short about a pig and a cookie. I didn't watch that because I had difficulty clicking on it. For some reason my menu was acting up. And there's an additional scene where Winter tries to meet another dolphin and they don't really get along. And a gag reel where everyone flubs their line and then laughs at the screen, as usual. So I definitely thought this is great for kids and you should give it to your kid. This one's a weird one you've probably never heard of, but as soon as I saw who was in it, I knew I had to watch it. This is the Increasingly Poor Decisions of Todd Margaret, Series 1. The cast is led by David Cross, comedian and actor from Arrested Development, and he is joined by another Arrested Development alumni, Will Arnett, who is playing his boss. Basically, the series is about his boss tells Todd Margaret, guess what? I've decided that you, you temp, you are going to lead up our office in Britain because you said that you know everything about the UK and you're going to sell these uh, Thunder Muscle energy drinks in the UK because I think that they're popular there. Well, Todd Margaret has not lived in the UK. He does not know anything about it, but he just goes along with pretending he knows about it. And the series is about his habit of lying, getting him into more and more trouble. He gets an assistant played by Blake Harrison who makes his life more difficult. And he meets a waitress that he gets a crush on and she is played by Sharon Horgan. It's like that first time that you watch Meet the Parents and you felt really bad for Ben Stiller because all these horrible things are happening to him and he really is a good person at heart. It's like that, except all these horrible things are happening to this guy he is causing them to happen, and you're really not sure deep down how good of a guy he is. You think that he's probably, his heart's in the right place, but he does some pretty despicable things to achieve ends. The short series, the entire thing only has a running time of 140 minutes, and to make up for it, they throw in a lot of special features. There's commentaries on all episodes. There is an extended version of the first episode, and you get featurettes, which are very funny. It's a lot of David Cross and Will Arnett back and forth improvising, making up things about each other. Hilarious stuff. And there's Q&A with cast and crew, bloopers. Of course the bloopers are funny. The uh, deleted scenes, like alternate takes, how long the Thunder Muscle sequence went on where he's just binging the energy drink forever and saying ridiculous stuff. This is pretty funny. It's probably pretty hard to find. I don't know. I had never heard of it before, and I thought it was hilariously sad because you feel bad for this guy. And all that fits on just one DVD. The win of this set is this one for sure, but Family Guy is always great, even when some of the episodes I don't like. And Dolphin Tail, good for your kids. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll join me next time. Bye-bye. For more reviews and to find out about free contest giveaways, go to hauntedflowerreviews.com. My reviews are also available as a podcast on iTunes. Search for Haunted Flower Reviews and subscribe and leave us feedback and comments. Our store is hauntedflower.com where we specialize in fantastic licensed apparel from movies, TV shows, video games, anime, and more. So you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hauntedflower and Twitter at haunted underscore flower. If you're local to the Indianapolis area, visit IndieMojo.com for details on how you can win free screening passes.